Hello everyone, welcome back to the Nick and Cameron YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video, an ownership video, a long term ownership video on my Volvo XC70 2004 uh, daily driver. If you guys have seen the videos on our channel, you know that we actually made a review on this car. I think I made it when I, in August or September of last year or so. Um, and uh, I hadn't had the car for a super long time at that point and I really hadn't had a chance to drive it in all four seasons. And uh, now I guess my opinion of the car has kind of changed. Um, I like the car then, I like the car even more now, but we're gonna get into kind of what it's been like to live with. Um, so first, quickly, if you wanna walk over here, just the car is kind of really dirty right now. My wheels are dirty, uh, mud and stuff, because we drove through some mud puddles last night. But I don't clean the car very often because um, we're in Washington here and it rains like every other day. And if I clean it all the time, it's just gonna get dirty all the time. So that's why it's dirty. So. Um, not because I don't care about it, but it's just dirty from that. Um, so I guess I'm just going to get into what it's been like to live with, um, real quick. Um, let's just hop inside real quick because really what you spend most of the time is inside. Um, so you guys want to come over here? <clears throat> so, um, this is after 15 months I've driven this car, by the way. And, um, as you guys can see, my floor mats are super dirty. This is my day's driver. I don't have time to clean it all the time, but I try to keep um, it free of a bunch of junk and stuff in here. You guys can see the odometer. This thing is almost at 212,000. I've put 8,000 miles on it. So not a ton of miles, especially for 15 months over a year. But if we look at my MPG, let's just get into the MPG real quick. I've been only averaging 18.3 MPG recently. Which is not very good. That's what it at least says. Um, and I find that that's me driving on 50 mile an hour, kind of like um, just out of sight, like two lane roads, a lot of like straight turns and just kind of like stopping at lights and stop signs and stuff. So I don't really drive in the city or the highway specifically. It's kind of like a in between. So if you drive on the highway, I usually get about 25 to up to 28 even if I drive kind of slow. Um, this is a cooling fan, by the way. That's why you hear that noise every time you turn it off. Makes it cool down. Um, which is kind of weird because I only ran it for like 10 seconds there. But, uh, city, you can expect to get probably about the same mileage as that. Um, I get 18.3 and that's me. I would say I, uh, have a, more of a lead foot. <laughs> um, driving a little harder than I guess your average person. But, um, so you can expect on average, I've definitely gotten like, over 20 mpg for over a month so pretty good the gas tank um 17 gallon tank and or i think it's a little bigger than that but um which doesn't really make the mpg sense because usually it says i have like over 400 miles of range which based on that i'd be getting something like 24 average and usually i think i actually do end up get 400 a tank so i don't know if that mpg number is correct but that's what it says you guys can let me know if you're a volvo xc70 owner what you guys get um practicality as far as practicality this thing has handled everything i've thrown at it um in the 15 months um in the previous video i didn't really have a chance to like really use it a ton to put the dog um in the back the dog's barking in the background and um use it to haul people around that much and like put, throw stuff in the back so the back this is the hatch right here it's a big square hatch as you guys can see it's a pretty nice space this is the factory carpet load bath that this one came with it's really clean back here um if i vacuum it it literally looks like brand new because this thing uh was taken really good care of by the previous owner right now i have the cargo net up that kind of divides and that's what i put the dog back here and then he doesn't jump in the back seats but um obviously he spent some time back here there's like the windows are like slobbered on and stuff but i use this this is a really nice feature if you guys have dogs or yeah i guess another pet that you'd put back here <laughs> Uh, um, this is like super nice. I actually didn't expect to use that a lot, but it's pretty good. Cargo net, I don't really use, or cargo cover, I don't really use that much, but it's been uh, handy a few times, like go Christmas shopping, and you can cover stuff up at the mall or whatever. But the cargo space has totally been adequate. Um, if you fold the seats down, me and Cameron recently went to Ikea a few months ago, and we got a huge desk, and this thing slid in there. I think it was over five feet long. Yeah. 63 inch desk long and then over 
not quite three feet wide, but this it fit in there, no problem with the legs and everything. So you can definitely throw flat furniture kind of in here. You'd probably put like some dinner chairs or something, uh, dining chairs back here. So the cargo space has been really good. The only thing is it's not super tall. If you guys can see, my head can't get in here. So you can't really like sit in here and like relax or whatever. I haven't tried to like sleep in the back yet. I don't think I would fit on six foot two. Um, but it's a little lower, but um, it makes it easier. I guess it's just a smaller vehicle. It's the space off the S60 sedan. It's filthy back here. Um, as far as back seats, how the back seat's been living with it. Um, the back seat, I would say, is the smallest proportional part. The front seats have great leg room. Seats are super adjustable, power seats. Back seat, so this is sitting behind myself. Yeah, no. So if you have, I guess, two tall adults, but um, Cameron was sitting in this seat. Um, I'm a little less cramped in this one. They do have these cutouts for your knees. But you can definitely fit adults back here. It's just not super comfortable. So if you're wanting to like stuff four people that are all like 5'10 or something in there, it's probably not going to be the best option if you're going on like a really long road trip. Um, back seat, I don't really use as much. That's the least used spot. Um, I guess we'll get into the features. If you want to go sit in the passenger seat, and we'll talk about the inside directly. So interior has stayed pretty clean over 15 months everything's been holding up really well scratches on the door handles and stuff have been they were previously there i mean this car does have almost 212,000 miles um i'm just getting a little gripes here so really the only negatives about the car so far is that this door handle it really flexes and squeaks i really don't like that um but that's like super minor thing um Seats are very comfortable, not super comfortable up top. They're kind of, it, do, it doesn't really like plush. It just kind of like feels like they're laying back on some cardboard, but the seat bottoms I really like. Uh, headrests are pretty good. Um, I like this center console a lot. Um, cup holders are pretty great. They little flaps on here have broken off, but that's just because they get brittle and old. Got a mask in here. This situation back here, I really like this center console because you don't have to like, you can just reach in there without even opening this. And then also you don't even, like some cars you have to have like, you have the double latch where it like opens this thing on top and then you have to click it again to open this. And I like this, I understand it's not as quite private. So if you have like electronics or whatever you want to put in there, um, it's not as private, but I really like this. It's got the little coin holder, I actually use that. So I think the center console and the practicality of this whole center console is really nice. If you have a really big cup here, um, it does kind of interfere with the shifter. Yeah, this is the passenger cup holder thing. If you fold this down, wait, I think I'm doing this wrong. I showed this before, I think, in the older view, but this is actually now supposed to be rear seat cup holders because if you pull this little center pad down, didn't show this, there's no cup holders in here. I literally would think I've used that once, but it's really clean. Everything's clean back there. So I really like this. Um, throw like flat stuff in here. And then um, it doesn't really work if you fall forward for a couple others, but really like the whole center console thing. Uh, the cup holders, if you have a really big cup here and you're like shifting, you might like hit your arm here, but um, not really a big deal. I don't, I usually just put stuff in the second cup holder. Um, e brake is pretty good. The boot hasn't fallen apart. Shifter boot is kind of starting to tear after a lot of wear, but this thing's been used thousands of times. This cup holder right here, showed in the previous episode, looks really cool, is really cool. Not really practical location though. Just this is way easier to use, but if you have three cups for some reason, or I think even if maybe you have like one of those cup phone, like phone mounts, you could probably put it in there and then this would be optimal location. So I kind of like that, but um, I know, I think uh, S60R, I don't know about the V70R, they actually just has a hole here, kind of weird. They just don't have that, but pretty neat. Um, 12 volt AC plug, or DC plug, I never use, but I don't really charge my car, or my phone in the car very often, but I'm sure it works. You've got these blank buttons here that you do have um, in the R models. Then, if you guys notice, this is aftermarket. This is the only aftermarket thing in here, this little Parrot uh, Bluetooth thing. I don't really use this controller specifically, but it hooks up to this wire, and there's a little screen that I just tuck in there. Can open it up, and 
my glove box is stuffed with napkins. <clears throat> this has been really nice. So this allows me to hook up with Bluetooth. Um, it also has like more cables in there for like a 30 pin connector for like a really old like iPhone 4 or iPod 4. <laughs> um, but this allows you to co connect with Bluetooth, which kind of solves the only thing that like a modern car would have over this. Like this thing has heated seats. It's got buttons on the steering wheel, cruise control. Um, all the HVAC works great. Um, <coughs> power automatic windows. If you do the double click, they just go up and you don't have to hold the button and you can do the same thing down. And then this thing basically solves the Bluetooth, the audio problem of not having that. Uh, it's not like as good as like having Apple CarPlay, but this thing is definitely not as expensive as a car with Apple CarPlay. This thing's kind of a pain in the ass to put it away. But yeah, I really actually use that all the time. Um, um, as far as what else to talk about, um, I do actually have one warning light on the dash. <clears throat> it's kind of odd. So if I start it up here, come on. Bulb failure position light is what this is going on. So this doesn't affect the drivability at all. And you might think that, the, oh, the brake light is out or whatever. And that's what I thought it was. Um, but it actually, all my brake lights work. And I think the reason it's doing that is because I replaced the brake light bulb at some point because it actually had burnt out. And I clicked the thing back in there and it just isn't registering. It's solid in there. I don't know what it is. So I got to clear that code at some point, but I don't have an OB2, OBD2 reader to clear that. Um, it's kind of annoying. Um, wipers. They work great. Um, I like this. You're just gonna have to get used to this little like wheel where you adjust the speed on the first setting of the wipers. It's a little odd, like different from other cars that just have like multiple clicks or you can click it all the way down. So it's super fast wipers. Um, everything has worked, nothing. The only thing that has gone wrong is shortly after we bought the car, funny enough, uh, the AC started making this horrible like squeaking noise and it was like, ee, ee, ee. and that was because <clears throat> the blower motor, the actual part that blows air through the vents went out. And that's been the only thing I replaced that myself. I think it was $130 at the time, but that was right after we got the car. That was over a year ago. I don't know how expensive it is now. Um, but that's the only thing that's broken on the car. And I also recharged the AC, but that's just like a time-based thing. Like your AC eventually <clears throat> goes out, but the car hasn't leaked any oil. Um, car doesn't lose coolant it's been great reliability has been spot on i sometimes now i've noticed that it takes a little longer to crank in the morning i don't know if that's the battery being old um but the transmission is totally fine that's being said i think i mentioned this in our review that the transmission was replaced like right at 200,000 miles by the previous owner i got this at 204 so the transmission is basically like under 15,000 miles on it so it's brand new basically um, but as far as reliability and everything working, nothing has broke. Oh, I did forget the window regulator on that passenger one. Um, the window regulator itself didn't work. It works totally fine now. As you guys can see, that's with the automatic windows. Pretty great. Um, and one of the, if you guys, you guys have probably seen this before. If you own one of these, apparently it's a common problem. You gotta take the door card off and then these little blue plastic clips they fail and they that's what holds the arms of the regulator attached to the, like this bottom of the window and it pushes it up that thing failed it was like whatever five dollars or something to replace it just was kind of hard to get in there and the window worked again so that was great that it wasn't whole regulator that's the only thing that's failed um so i guess we'll drive it um real quick and i'll just talk about what um how it's been to drive and whatnot so as far as like cars like wagons cars like this that are four thousand dollars or less or so because that's what i usually find these to be that's how much this one was was four grand you can find them for like 3200 sometimes i've seen them for under three thousand dollars cleaner ones that are like late later end of the run ones like 2007 ones i think that was the very last year of the run they have different wheels. They have a little bit different, the cladding is a different color. I think it's like a silver on the back, that kind of gray, like mine's really sun faded, but um, I've seen those be like six grand, but that's usually for under 100,000 mile ones, like really clean ones. Um, 
and overall it's just been dead reliable. I mean this thing has been a tank. I've driven it on the highway, not a ton, but I've done multiple like four hour driving stints on the highway, no problem. Um, I've driven out to, if you know, kind of geographically, if you know what kind of it is in Washington, I've driven from here to Tri-Cities and back on just uh, just over a tank of gas, I think. So one tank of gas to go all the way back and forth was super awesome. Um, another thing is you actually have these automatic garage door openers. You can program buttons up here. It's a really nice feature. Not a lot of cars have this from this time that are at this price point. I don't use that because um, I can't park in the garage, but uh, pretty nice. Yeah, so as far as features, this is like the most comfortable car. The ride is great. <clears throat> um, most comfortable car I have driven, I think, out of my friends as well. Um, it's kind of the do-it-all mobile. Um, if you get an S60, you just lose the um, wagon back. Um, and these XC70s are the only ones with the extra ground, ground clearance. And then you get all the cladding instead of um, body color, like uh, standard like rocker panels and stuff. Whereas this has all the plastic cladding. Um, I haven't really taken this thing like off-roading, and I know people like to do that, but I... I've seen based on the internet these things are super capable there's people that sell like lift kits for these um, it's pretty sick um, as far as is, do you think, like if this thing is too slow to drive uh, definitely not this thing can get out of its own way um, we talked about the specs of the motor 2.5 turbo previous episode but merging on the highway passing people on the highway is a breeze above like 75 it starts to kind of dog out up at the top end um, and it definitely slows down but if you live in live on a really busy road and you pull out often with like not and there's like cars coming or whatever um, I live on a 50 mile in a road I have to just pull out onto and this thing has no problem getting out into the road um, now that sounds like I can cut people off but I don't <laughs> um, so as far as like driving this thing hasn't had any problems the body is wallowy but that's because the suspension is lifted as you guys can see um, really that's the only thing that is specifically different you know this drives like a sedan this drives like a car because it is literally a unibody car platform vehicle um, and nothing I mean nothing is broken this has been the most reliable um, car I have ever owned and <clears throat> previous to this I drove a 2001 Lincoln LS uh, Sport very briefly before I got rear-ended and that car was really nice and it rode well but this car everything I feel like is put together better so if you're looking for like an early 2000s kind of middle luxury car and you have like five grand or so I think this is the best option. Super Outbacks, they're like the same price as this thing, and you're, it, well, number one, you're dealing with a engine that's not notorious for being bad, but the non-turbo ones are much more reliable, but you can't get a turbo one without, you know, facing the Subaru kind of standard head gasket problems, and um, I just think that, that for the price, the thing cannot be beat as far as practicality and reliability, and you're, it, it's been as reliable as something like a Jap like Japanese car, like a Honda or Toyota, and it's also provided the features <clears throat> of, you know, a nicer, which I guess you could say German luxury brand car. And overall, I just think if you're looking to buy one of these, don't hesitate. Um, or if you think that you're just sitting, like if you're just sitting behind this or a Subaru Outback, I've driven this thing in the snow, it's handled the snow very well. I know Subarus are super good in the snow, but if you think that the Subaru is vastly superior with the all-wheel drive system, I would say this thing is probably on par. Um, maybe not quite on par, but very similar. And overall, this thing has totally been awesome. The stop starts well. Um, just overall, just a really good car. I don't really know what else to say. It's all basically positive from me. Um, I've had four people riding in here, all my friends. I mean, it's not like a comfortable car to put a bunch of people in 
So um, I think that'll be the end of the video, what it's like to own and drive this thing for 15 months, a pretty long time. Um, I don't know how long I'll have this car, but um, I'm sure it'll serve me well in the future. And this thing, I have no doubt, will be able to eclipse like a quarter million of a miles. So uh, thank you guys. Please like and subscribe if you like this video. Um, uh, check out our other video on this car where we talk about the specs more specifically and the little details and stuff. And um, we have lots of other, um, we have a few other car reviews and we have all sorts of other content on the channel. So um, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.